Is it worth paying for this extra service just to get on rides faster? There are some major problems that are caused because of this, but it could also be the only way that you can fully enjoy your Disney Park experience. We'll take you with us on our journey as we experience Disney's new Lightning Lane Multi-Pass and Single Pass, and we'll answer as many questions as we can about this new service. And we're going to be giving really important information throughout the video all the way to the end so you don't want to miss out. So please come and explore with us, y'all. Hey y'all, I'm Jason and my wife is Melody. Thank y'all for joining us. We stayed at the Saratoga Springs, which is a Disney resort, so we were able to schedule seven days in advance. We had a three-day trip, so we were able to schedule our seventh, eighth, and ninth day. The second time we stayed, we stayed in a non-Disney resort, and I tell you what, it's a huge disadvantage. If You only get three days, and I just think that is a disservice to people that don't stay in the Disney bubble, but that's how Disney's making their money. They're trying to get people to stay in their places. It's almost like you have to take a college class just to understand this new system. But I will say that the app was actually pretty easy. You just select your eligible party and then you just click on which ride you want. Now there are tiers. There's a tier one and a tier two. You can only choose one tier one and two tier twos to start with for the lightning lane multi-pass. And you can select up to two lightning lane single passes for rides that are the more popular rides like Tron and Rise of the Resistance and so forth. So our combined price for two of us was over $219. Now that can get expensive, especially if you have a big family. This is kind of where I don't agree with why Disney is charging more money for something that used to be free. Our first day started in the afternoon in Epcot. We're here. So we headed right over to the World Showcase and our first ride was Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. We got right in, scanned our bands. The scanner turns green when you're on time. Now immediately after you scan your band, you need to go through the queue, you need to get onto your phone and see what next rides are available. Now one important thing to note here is after you scan in, the next, the next set of rides have no tiers. So you can go to any ride and you can see here that we got Sorn, which in the beginning is a tier one ride. So we were able to snag that and that's awesome. Okay, so Soren from 4.35 to 5.35. Living with the land from 5.40 to 6.40. And space to birth from 6.20 to 7.20. All right, so we were able to hit uh, Soren right after we are on that ride, and we can go on it right now if we want. One nice thing about having this pass is it gives you the opportunity to stay out of the lines, because when those lines, it gets really hot. That Ratatouille ride was over an hour long. Air conditioning is key. So after we scanned in on Soarin' and looked at our app, we realized there was nothing more we can get for our third ride because you can get up to three rides at a time. And since we already scanned in, we had another ride available to, to get and there just was nothing for us that we wanted. And you can see that living with the land doesn't have much of a weight, so it was almost kind of a waste to have a lightning lane for that one. Ends up being that uh, Spaceship Earth was actually broke down at the time, so we thought, eh, maybe we can get a free one since that one's broke down. More on that later. If your ticket has a park hopping accessibility or you have an annual pass, you can actually schedule a ride in a different park while you're in another park, and that's what we decided to do. All right, we're at Magic Kingdom. It's a little busier than Epcot, but we couldn't get a ride till 9 o'clock uh, for Pirates of the Caribbean, so we're going to hope that we can get some stuff for after hours. That's what we're hoping. Cross our fingers. We actually don't know. We haven't looked this up. We're going to see. Good luck to us. Because we went in the evening time, it was right before the fireworks were about to go off, we were able to get on rides really quick without even using our pass. So Jungle Cruise had a minimal weight. Then we went on Big Thunder Mountain with a minimal weight. It was awesome. So I remember on Epcot when Spaceship Earth was broke down, we had thought that we could just get another ride because that one was broke down and we couldn't go on it. So we tried it at uh, Tiana's. We went up to Tiana's and we talked to the cast members and they said that, they, that, that it wasn't showing up on our app so we couldn't actually just go onto this ride but because it was so slow because of fireworks we got pixie dusted and they let us go right through so we got to go on to Tiana's uh, so which was awesome but we will show you later in the video that there was a ride that was shut down and we were able to get a free pass for any ride that we wanted stay tuned for that so we wanted to test something here we waited till after hours which it closed at 10 to see if we can actually get into our ride uh, for our lightning lane and you couldn't so it doesn't work after hours okay we are on our second day y'all and um this is what's on the docket for today now we booked these um actually eight days out because you can book seven days out from the first vacation day stay but i can book my if we 
start on the seventh day, we can book the eighth, the ninth, the tenth, even the eleventh we can book. So it's kind of cool. I like this new system as far as that goes. And so what we've got on the docket for today, first up, we've got Haunted Mansion from 9.45 to 10.45. Then we have Pirates of the Caribbean from 10.45 to 11.45. And then we have Big Thunder Mountain from 11.45 to 12.45. And Seven Dwarves Mine Train from 12.45 to 1.45. So for this one, we bought a Lightning Lane single pass, which cost us $12 per person. To me, it's worth it because I don't have to wait in that 80 minute long wait. So if you either, you either have to rope drop this one or I would just pay for it. We didn't wait longer than five minutes in each one of these rides. So we were in and out of them really quick. So that was one really nice thing. So you do have a lot of time on your hands in between rides to do some other things like shopping. See this little outfit we're gonna get for a little one someday. I smell trouble. Where's the trouble? Right there. Caution, people. Or go play at Tom Sawyer's Island. Oh, I'm terrible on that. Or try your luck right, with the sword go. and the stone. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh. All right. Here we go. Ah, no, it doesn't move. Not strong today. Or even just sit down and enjoy a nice snack and a nice beverage. So what happens when you arrive to a ride too early before your time? Well, it blinks blue and it won't let you in. So what is the earliest you can go in before your time? Well, let's ask the cast member. I think I'm a little early. That's okay. How early can you be? Oh, five minutes. You're like five minutes and 30 seconds, so you're good. Okay, good. Five yeah, it's just going to turn blue, but it's okay. You're still good. Mine turned green. <laughs> yeah, afterwards it'll turn green. You're oh, all set. thank you. Because we stayed in a Disney resort, we were able to schedule our stuff seven days, eight days, nine days in advance and we were able to get morning rides. But our next trip, we weren't able to get morning rides. Most of our rides had to start in the afternoon, at least the good rides. And the advantage of starting early is that you get to have things in the afternoon that you have choices to do. Now, I wouldn't say the big rides you had a lot of choices from. Uh, we had a hard time finding rides like Tiana's. So we left Magic Kingdom and headed on over to Animal Kingdom. Now we love Animal Kingdom, but I'm not sure it's the best place to use this new system for because the rides just aren't that long a wait, especially if you hit it at the right time. So we got on the safari really quick. It didn't take us very long. We didn't even need the pass for that one, but we used it anyways. Why not, right? And then we went over to the, the Festival of the Lion King. We wanted to try the show. They let you in first when you have a lightning lane pass. But we actually got the front row, but you know what? I don't think we really needed it for that either. And the last ride was the Cali River Rapids. But we didn't get to ride it because it was storming and it was raining for a very long time and so they canceled the ride. And so we got a free pass that we were able to use the next day at Hollywood Studios. You're nice and wet? Yeah. Stuck my hair in my shirt. Oh my gosh. We got plastic bags. They gave us plastic bags in the restaurant. There ain't no one in here. The rain was storming. It's supposed to have more downpour coming here in a minute. But all is good because we got home safe. All right, day number three, we're at Hollywood Studios. If you didn't already know, this is the best park in Disney World. You heard it from me. The first one we got was an individual pass lightning lane, and that is Rise of the Resistance. It's the first one we're gonna ride to. We got Tower of Terror, uh, Toy Story Mania, and Minnie and Mickey's Runaway Railway. Those are the three that we got. We also have a free pass that we got yesterday. So it comes up as multiple experiences on your app where you get to choose from certain rides that you can actually ride. Now, they don't give you the best rides. They just give you some of the rides. But for Hollywood Studios, you can get some decent rides there. So we end up choosing a ride that we really enjoy, and that's uh, Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. We like it, so it was nice for us. So this pass kind of works really good for Hollywood Studios because Hollywood Studios, especially in the middle of the day, gets really busy, and a lot of the ride lines are long. There was a lot of availability throughout the day for Rise of the Resistance to be able to purchase that individual lightning lane. Uh, but rides like... Uh, Slink Dog Dash. If you don't get that at the seven day mark uh, early, it, it we didn't see that thing available all day long. Now I'm not saying it won't, but it was a hard ride to get on. So you need to get that one early if you want to ride that. So what happens when one person in your party signs up for a ride but decides they don't want to go on the ride? Uh, what do you do? So I've got to go scan my magic band at Hollywood Tower of Terror. I didn't ride it, but I have to scan it so we can get into another ride. So for Tower of Terror, they have two touch points, so they had to use the iPad to actually clear me. So 
if you want to modify your ride, do it beforehand. Don't do it afterwards. If you want to take one person off of it. We ended up leaving Hollywood Studios because my wife wanted to do a virtual queue to get onto Guardians of the Galaxy at 1 p.m. in Epcot. But we wanted to answer two major questions. One, what does it do to the standby lines? Does it make it a lot longer? Does the wait a lot longer? And two, how late can you actually scan into the ride? Heading to Soaring Around the World. Now, we purposely are, are late on this one because we want to see when we go to scan in what happens. We're testing this. We're going to scan in a lot, an hour later than our allotted time. So, we'll see what happens. They let us through. They said that uh, it's supposed to be a 15-minute window afterwards, but it's not the case. They let us through over an hour later. So to answer the other question, the line was very long. In fact, it was almost out to the end, and that's a long wait for that ride. Now, when we got to the front of where we were on the lightning lane, we almost walked right up to the front. And we noticed that and when we got to the back of that line, they were letting people through. Then they stopped us right at the beginning because there's three concourses. And once those concourses are full, we have to wait. When the concourses, one of them empties, they start letting other, they start emptying the lines. But what I notice is that they let out the lightning lane again after they just got through letting out the lightning lane where the standby line was just sitting there waiting. So it does slow down the standby line significantly. So that's why those lines get to be so long sometimes. And something popped up really quick. It was frozen ever after. But she couldn't get it because she wasn't fast enough because we had something else on our thing that we're going to right now but because of that we weren't able to get into frozen ever after because we had an extra one on our list so rides will pop up on the app randomly uh, you just have to be prepared and quick sometimes you have to be staring at your phone i don't know if that's really a good thing but if you're really on it you can probably get some rides okay, that you really now want. this thing isn't for everyone um it, it there's some nuances to it that we realized um, after purchasing it um, that happened to us that made it a little bit frustrating. And one of them was that um, we realized when we didn't stay on property that we didn't have the advantage, right? Because if you stay on property, you have an advantage. So we had to book a little bit later than everyone else. And so as we were doing so, we realized that the times for the rides were in the afternoon. So what we thought we could do was book rides in the afternoon, say at Epcot, and we didn't use all our tiers yet. Like we used like um, a tier one and then we bought a single pass lightning lane. And then we thought if we just like, um, checked into Epcot and then went over to Hollywood Studios that we would be able to book our tier two rides. But that wasn't the case. We actually had to book, um, scan through a any ride using our multi um, lightning lane multipass, scan through any ride using our lightning lane multipass before we could book anything in another park. So it has to be done in the first park you start booking all of your passes, if that makes sense. And it was so frustrating because we booked and then we couldn't book anything so i thought well maybe we'll go to hollywood hollywood studios and see if we can book something and we went over there and we couldn't book anything so the customer service helped us out um which hopefully they they'll help you out too if something like that confusing happens to you too they were very kind and nice to us but one of the things we did notice as we were um standing there is there was a family next to us talking to customer service and they were from obviously not america um they because they went up to the customer service and said, we'd like to buy the the multi, multi um, the Lightning Lane multi-pass. And um, so my family and I don't have to wait in these lines and stay on these rides. And uh, she, you know, she was just talking to him. And of course, I'm being nosy and kind of listening at, you know, seeing what's happening. And basically, they're from overseas. And they had come there. And she just basically explained to them, she goes, well, it's kind of a waste of money for you now, because there's not anything to book. And you, you know, it's, not even worth it you might as well just stand in the lines because you're not going to get anything with your multi lightning lane multi-pass and it comes to a real disadvantage to people who are overseas even staying at deluxe resorts they cannot book the that pass um till they get to the parks um for whatever reason so it's kind of a um interesting conundrum disney has 
you know, got themselves into here. I think it needs to be more for user friendly to people who live in the United States and people who live outside of the United States. Because if you book the same day, yeah, she's right. There was nothing. And they were booking, trying to buy the Lightning Lane multipass mid-afternoon and trying to book. And that is just a waste of money. It's not going to help you out. You might as well, like she said, stand in the lines. So uh, my opinion, Disney has um, needs to fix these things. Um, and I have um, some opinions about what they should do. Maybe in another video, we'll discuss that. But um, just some tips for you there. So back to the original question that I asked, is this worth it? I would say yes and no. Certain parks, I would say yes. Magic Kingdom, yes. Hollywood Studios, yes. But not so much for Epcot right now and not so much for Animal Kingdom. But you know what? We don't actually use these all the time. We know how to get around on these rides without having to uh, purchase these things. You just have to rope drop and stay late. That's usually the trick. Uh, but it, to, get you, to maximize your full day, this is probably very beneficial to you because you can use this and use other strategies to actually ride a ton of rides without this you might not be able to ride every ride that you want to do so disney's kind of kind of forced the hand and kind of makes you pay for it uh, so that's kind of i think what they wanted uh, they do make more money on it is it right i don't know but you know we appreciate you watching y'all and until next video we'll see you next time